Hello and welcome to yet another video in the Study Trails S3 course. In this video, you'll learn everything that you need to know to deploy a static website on Amazon S3. You'll also learn how to set up HTTPS for your website using Amazon CloudFront and AWS Certificate Manager. I'll also walk you through how to use the Content Delivery Network, which is Amazon CloudFront. If you have a website hosted in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, then this video is perfect for you. You can also use this to deploy a single page web app that you've built using any of the JavaScript based technologies. So let's get started. Let's understand how the deployment works. We start with the S3 bucket. In the S3 bucket, we upload our static website files. So let's say you have your file index.html and error.html. Our user is on the left. We want to deploy the website such that the user can access index.html. The first thing that the user will type in is the URL of the website. Now let's say our website is called site.studytrails.com. Now when the user types in site.studytrails.com, we need to be able to forward the request to the S3 bucket. Now instead of hitting the S3 bucket directly, we'll put a layer of CDN in front of it. This CDN is CloudFront. The CloudFront in turn will forward the request to the S3 bucket. Now to be able to resolve site.studytrails.com to the CloudFront entry, we need to add an entry into Route 53. This Route 53 DNS entry will resolve all requests for site.studytrails.com to the CloudFront endpoint. So the user when types in the URL in his browser, it will first hit Route 53. Route 53 will then redirect the user to the CloudFront instance. Now we also want to use HTTPS endpoint. To use the HTTPS endpoint, we'll use a certificate manager from AWS. This is called the ACM or AWS Certificate Manager. When the user types in HTTPS, CloudFront will use ACM to check the certificate. Once it finds a valid certificate, it will forward the request to the S3 bucket. Now in order for CloudFront to be able to access the S3 bucket, we will create what is known as OAI or Origin Access Identity. The S3 bucket has a bucket policy that will only allow the OAI to access the bucket and not anyone else. This will ensure that nobody can directly access the S3 bucket. And we also don't need to make the S3 bucket public. Let's now see this in action. Here are the steps. In the first step, we'll create the S3 bucket and also upload our files there. In the second step, we'll create an origin identity access so that CloudFront can access the S3 bucket. In the first step, we'll create the CloudFront endpoint. In the next step, we'll create the policy for the S3 bucket so that CloudFront can access the bucket. While creating the CloudFront, we'll also create ACM so that we can verify the certificate for HTTPS. Once we have set up the CloudFront, we will then finally create the Route 53 entry so that the user can use the URL to connect to the CloudFront. That's it, let's get started. The first step in hosting your website is to create a bucket in S3. If you don't have an account in AWS, create an account first. Once you create an account, log into the management console and type in S3. Select S3 and this is where you can create your own bucket. I'm going to create a new bucket to host my static website. I'll call this bucket study trails S3 site. Choose a region for your bucket. I'll choose US East 1. We'll turn off public access for this bucket since we'll be accessing the objects in the bucket, the files in the bucket using CloudFront. We'll disable versioning as well as encryption and then click on create bucket. A new bucket has been created. The next step is to upload our files to this bucket. Click on the bucket name and click on upload. Before I upload the file, I will show you the two files that I've created from my website. It's a simplistic website containing two files, index.html and error.html. This is the index.html file. Let us first upload these files onto the S3 bucket. So go to the bucket, click on the bucket and click on upload. Add the files to the bucket. So I'm going to add the error and index.html files. Upload. 
the files have been uploaded. Now the second step is to create an origin access identity that can be used to access the bucket. Go to the console again and type in CloudFront. Once you are in CloudFront, scroll to the bottom and in the left menu, click on origin access identity and create OAI. In the comment, type in OAI for website access. Now CloudFront is going to use this OAI to access the S3 bucket. The next step is to create the certificate. Go to the console and type in ACM. Click on Certificate Manager and click on Request a Certificate. We want to request a public certificate for the site site.studytrails.com. This is what the users will type in to go to the website. Click on Next. We'll use DNS validation. Now I've hosted the DNS within Route 53. If you're using any other DNS provider, then you'll need to download the DNS configuration. And this is now going to create a certificate, but you'll need to validate the certificate and the validation proves that you own the site. If you have hosted the DNS on Route 53, then scroll to the bottom and click on create record in Route 53. Click on create, and this will create the record in Route 53. Click on continue. Now it takes a while for the validation to complete. We'll come back to the screen once the validation is finished. The validation is now complete. The next step is to create the CloudFront distribution. Click on CloudFront in the management console and click on create distribution. Get started. In the origin name, you should be able to select the Amazon S3 bucket that we have created. I select Study Trails S3 site. Origin path is the folder in which you have stored the files. In my case, I have stored the files in the root folder. That's why I don't need to specify anything. I'm going to restrict the bucket access so that users can only access the website through the CloudFront distribution and not through the bucket. We'll use the existing identity that you have created. We want the process to also update the bucket policy so that the origin access identity can access the bucket. We can specify custom headers. We don't have anything in our case. We also want to redirect HTTP to HTTPS. In the description settings, we need to set the CNAME of the site that we are going to use for this website. So my site is called site.studytrails.com. This is the URL that the users will type in to access the website. We'll use the custom SSL certificate that we've already created called site.studytrails.com. The default root object for us is index.html. This is the home page that will be opened if you type in the site name. And click on create distribution. Go to distributions. And as you see, the distribution has been created. It might take a few minutes for the distribution to completely create. So I'll come back once it's created. The CloudFront distribution has now been created. As a next step, we'll now create an entry into Route 53. We'll now create a DNS entry so that site.studytrails.com is resolved to this CloudFront distribution. Go to AWS console and click on Route 53. If you can't find it, type it in the search bar. Click on Hosted Zones and go to the Hosted Zone for your site. I'll create a new record set. I call it site.studytrails.com. I need a type A, I click on Elias, and here I can select the CloudFront distribution. Also note that you'll need to wait for the CloudFront distribution to be ready before you see it here. Click on Create. This has now created a DNS entry into our DNS provider. Now we might have to wait for a few minutes for the DNS entry to be propagated. Once the DNS entry has been propagated, go to your browser and type in site studytrails.com or whatever is the name for your site and hit enter and there you go a website is now ready the website is being served by CloudFront backed by Amazon S3 and as you can see it is on a secure HTTPS endpoint let's now look at what happens if you modify our file and upload it again I'm going to change my index.html to say sample website 2 I now need to upload this file into my S3 bucket 
So I go to the AWS console again. Go to S3, go to a bucket, and then upload a file. We upload the same file again. The file has been uploaded. Let's now see if our changes are reflected on the website. They are not. And that's because CloudFront caches your HTML page. To tell CloudFront to reload your index.html, what we'll have to do is we'll have to invalidate the cache. Go to CloudFront. Go to your distribution. Click on invalidations. Create a new invalidation. Now here you can specify the name of the file that you have changed. So in our case, it is index.html. Or if you want to recache everything, then you can say slash star. Now this is slightly tricky because if you have a huge website, then this is going to remove everything from cache. So if you have a particular folder that you have changed, then you could probably mention the folder name followed by star. Or if you know there is a specific file that you have changed, such as what we have done, then you can keep the name of the file. Let's skip everything for now. And I'm going to click on invalidate. This might take a while. We'll come back once this is finished. And the distribution has now been invalidated. Let's go back to our website. So I go back to the browser and I type in site.studytales.com and then I can see the new HTML web page. And that's the end of the video. In this video, we looked at how to create a static website using Amazon S3, create an HTTPS endpoint using certificate from AWS Certificate Manager, create a CDN using Amazon CloudFront, and also redeploy changes to the static website. You can use the same method to deploy a single page web app, such as an app made in AngularJS or ReactJS. Feel free to leave in your comments, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to my channel for more videos. See you in the next video.